Kia ora. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. It's, it's good to come together. Thank you, band, for starting us off there. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else but naught to me, save that thou art. Be my breastplate, my sword for the fight, my whole armour. We uh, come together this morning and there's been uh, uh, quite a week, really. I'm just going to put this book down. It's been quite a week for lots of reasons. There's been uh, illness, and there still is illness within the core. There's been news and family news that we did or didn't want to hear. There's been uh, news yesterday of, of Nairi's uh, promotion to glory. Uh, Nairi Kendra, if you hadn't already caught on, was promoted to glory yesterday morning, um, who we farewelled only a few weeks ago uh, from the core here as they were heading down to Christchurch. There's been a lot going on. Uh, And it means that this morning uh, we come together in worship and we bring with us the emotions of the week, of lots of different emotions, I'm sure, happy, sad, in between, not really sure where to go. And and I've said before, and I will say again this morning, uh, I am not one to tell you to leave that at the door as we come to worship this morning. I'm one to tell you to bring it all with you and bring it to God this morning. We bring everything that we feel to God, knowing that he can handle it. In Psalm 138, as we begin worship this morning, as Kate decides to run off, uh, Psalm 138, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though lofty, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. We come this morning, some of us with great joy for what has happened through the week, some of us with great sadness, some of us with everything else in between, but we bring it to the Lord this morning. And so we come to praise him this morning. We're going to sing our first song together. It says, stand up and bless the Lord as we come together this morning. We praise him. So let's stand and sing this together. Stand up and bless the Lord. We'll see the first couple of verses first. There we go. The third verse. Oh, for the living flame from his own altar brought. We talked of Isaiah a few weeks ago now, or maybe even a month or so ago. 
of the, the altar coming and cleansing us of our sin. Oh, for the living flame from his own altar brought to touch our lips, our minds inspire, and wing to heaven our thought. God, who is so powerful that he can take all that is us and, and make it clean for him. We praise him this morning. We'll sing verses 4 and 5. God is our strength and song. Verse 4. As we, uh, as I kind of, as we come when we praise Him for everything, we also, I'm sure, come with questions. We always come with questions, I think, before God, and it's good and it's right uh, to to not be really sure what's going on and to bring that before Him. Psalm 42. Now, Psalm 42 says, "As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for You, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go?" And meet with God. My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour. And my God, my soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar, deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All the waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to the God, my rock, Why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying with me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, though, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. I love all through Scripture and and lament in these Psalms, where people have all these questions. They, they bring them all before God, which is good, but it always ends going, but I remember God and his wonders and his works before me. That doesn't mean we forget the struggles we're going through, but we bring it to God confident that our hope is in him who can handle it. As we just sit in this for a moment, a, a piece of music's going to play uh, and the words will, will follow along. And it just asks a lot of these questions. There are times, Lord, where I ask why, where I ask what. And as we just sit and reflect for a moment, we'll just uh, hear this piece of music and, and follow the words on the screen. Thanks, Linda.
We've all had those feelings before. There are times where we have to ask why, we have to ask how, we have to ask what. And in all those times, we look to God for help. Let's pray together. Lord, in the Psalms, we lift our eyes to the mountains. And where does our help come from, Lord? It comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. We lift our eyes to you and know that our hope is found in you, our strength is found in you. So, Lord, through all the challenges of life, be it uh, sickness, be it life uh, situations thrown at us, Lord, whatever it is, Lord, in these times we look to you. We ask all our questions of you, Lord, but we ask them not in vain, but knowing that you, uh, Lord, will handle them for us. Lord, you may not... uh, Answer us in the way we want sometimes, but Lord, our hope is in you, and we are confident, Lord, that you, all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving, all-caring God, will be what we need in the moment. So Lord, be with us, we pray. Lord, you do so much for us. You give so much of yourself for us. And so Lord, we just look to you in these Hard times, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So I now bring some announcements. Phil is uh, down in Christchurch. That's where he is. There was a, a divisional soldiers advisory council meeting. I better give it the right title. A meeting in Christchurch that Phil went to. How about that? That's easier. Uh, And they are worshipping down there in Christchurch and will be back, I'm sure, tonight or tomorrow whenever they decide to hit the road again. Uh, So that's where Phil is, so you've got me. Uh, So the the, the initial news, as I I shared at the start, was the news yesterday of Nairi Kendrew's promotion to glory passing yesterday morning. Uh, Graham was was in touch yesterday to let me know, and then uh, news, of course, I'm sure spreads as it does within the Salvation Army. I can share that I got off the phone last night with Susan Goldsack. Uh, The Dean and Susan will be looking after a funeral for Nairi. Uh, It will be this coming Saturday in Christchurch at the Sydenham Corps. It will be Saturday afternoon. So I do not yet have a time on Saturday afternoon except to say it will be Saturday afternoon at Sydenham Core in Christchurch, and that Dean and Susan will be uh, obviously previous COs here uh, and now based down in Christchurch are looking after the service. Uh, as more information comes, specifically times and things like that, we will send those out as they become available, but Susan was able to let me know that last night so that I could say that this morning. So if you are wanting to go down to Christchurch for that, Saturday afternoon at Sydenham Core. Um, we will, I'm sure, have members from here that will be making their way down there, so as we get through the week, I'm sure plans will start being made around vehicles and carpooling and vans or whatever needs to happen uh, to get people to and from Christchurch over that next weekend. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, another just piece of, uh, uh, of things that have been going on during the week, just to say, uh, COVID is still among us, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, So, as we have said, if you feel that uh, you would be more comfortable wearing a mask, by all means, while the rules say it's not required, that doesn't mean it's not a bad idea to put a mask on sometimes. Uh, So, uh, as we've said every week, the the rules are there, uh, or not the rules, the idea is there. If you wish to wear a mask, go for it. Uh, If you are unwell and need to stay home, that's fine. Join us on the stream. Uh, But please remember predominantly at the moment, our music team uh, that will not be with us this morning as a good chunk of them have COVID. Uh, But just keep in mind, right, the bugs and all those things are still out there. Um, Sure, the restrictions have been pulled, but that doesn't mean that we're all out the woods yet. Uh, So just that piece of news there. Uh, Other things to say, if you haven't uh, grabbed the war cry on the way in, the war cry that was last week mentioned that's turning to monthly editions, the first monthly edition is there. It is of course now a bit thicker, um, being monthly, but uh, the first uh, November edition of the monthly war cry in its new format uh, is out there now. 
uh, to say that next Saturday we'll be having the men's group uh, up in the lounge. Uh, that'll be going ahead. Toy offering, if uh, not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, uh, we're going to take up an offering in the service. It's been in the newsletter, but we haven't said it until now. Uh, for our gifts uh, for kids, it's coming up on Christmas, would you believe? Um, uh, and so if you, uh, on that Sunday, wish to uh, bring a toy along to the service and we'll then have a time in the service we can uh, take up an offering, it'll be nice to, to see it all to come together. Uh, obviously, if you miss out on that, there's lots of time. Well, there's lots of time till Christmas, but it is barreling quickly upon us. Um, but it'll be, we're all getting ourselves ready to go for this hall being turned into whatever it turns into every year full of toys uh, in the middle or so of December uh, coming up. So two Sundays time, a toy offering will be taken up. Uh, and I would have handed over to Tony at this point, uh, but she's unwell as well. Uh, so I will say, um, if you haven't already saved the date for the women's retreat uh, held next year, the date's there in the newsletter again. For the really observant of you, you will notice it might have pushed out a weekend from when you first saved the date. So make sure that you save the right date. Uh, but there was going to be a quiz night on Saturday the 19th of November, raising some funds for that women's retreat. Uh, so come along on Saturday the 19th of November at 7pm. Uh, teams of up to six, $10 per person to help a fundraise to pay all the costs and things of putting on a great uh, retreat uh, weekend next year, Saturday the 19th of November. It's up on Facebook for those that use that as well. Uh, and it will be great to all come together and have a bit of friendly competition and see how much we all know. Fellow friendly competition. Friendly competition. We'll be friends before it and we'll be friends after it and whatever happens in the event itself is a different conversation. Yeah? One of those. And with all of this said, uh, as we say most weeks, the uh, offering, uh, the regular weekly offering uh, taken up on the plate at the back of the hall uh, is still the, uh, available uh, to give that way. Uh, we also want to acknowledge perhaps, uh, this I'll just say this week, that a good chunk of us are actually giving digitally uh, so thank you for everyone also that is giving every week just via the internet. Um, but let's just take a moment now uh, and pray for our offerings that are given each week, whether it is in a plate or whether it happens on the internet. Let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for all you give to us. You give so freely to us. You gave your son for us. You uh, create and sustain all things. And so, Lord, we, we come to you this morning with uh, some of what we have in our hands to give back to you. Lord, as we give this to you, as we do each week, we pray that you would uh, bless it and use it to grow your kingdom here in Blenheim, uh, that more and more people would come to know you as, as Saviour and Lord through the use of these funds. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now we're going to do Change for Children. So Kate's going to come and help me, please. Yes, she is going to come and help me this week. There's a bucket. Oh, and Mummy's going to help too. Okay, and there you go. Cool. And we're going to start the clip. Hit it, boys. Have you ever seen a boy with funny clothes? A girl with braces on her teeth or freckles on her nose? Some kids call them oddballs. Some kids call them weird. Is it my imagination or does Aunt Ruth have a beard? God makes lots of people in all colors, shapes, and sizes. He loves them very much, and what we need to realize is that calling people names because they're different is wrong. Instead, we need to look on them in love and sing this song. I can be your friend. I can be your friend. Some are skinny, some are stout. But the inside is the part that we're supposed to care about. Aye, that's where we got feelings that are very much the same. And so instead of weirdo, I think friend's a better name. I can be your friend. La, la, la. I can be your friend. La, la, la. If your hair is red or yellow, we John's can have lunch. Fantastic. Enjoying that. 
They're all on YouTube, don't worry. <laughs> Let's pray. Uh, Lord, it's great to take this moment uh, to have a bit of fun, to, to hear some, some silly songs, uh, but Lord, to uh, give uh, again to you, but to give to support children all over the world, children uh, in countries within our territory, New Zealand, Fiji, Tonga, and Samoa, but also in other parts of the world, in Africa and Asia and all over the place. Lord, as this money is, is sent over uh, to support centres and to support sponsored children, we pray that again that it would be used to grow your kingdom, that people would come to know you, children would come to know you and your love uh, through the use of these funds. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So on our journey through Scripture, we come to 2 Corinthians again, the Scripture reading. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 now. See, we've moved off 8 into 9. We're getting there. And it's just five verses, the first five verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It is on the front of your newsletter there as well. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Paul, there is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people. For I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I am sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready, as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you had promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift, not as one grudgingly given. And Emma's going to share from that scripture in a moment, but she's going to come and lead a song because Linda's going to play the club. And me and Kate are going to run out. It's just me and Kate, isn't it? Yes. Right, she's off. I better go. I'm going to invite you to stand as we uh, sing together, Now Thank We All Our God. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things have done and whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms have blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. So let's declare our thanks as we sing these three verses straight through.
And Lord, as we delve into your word this morning uh, to hear what it is to live generous lives, uh, Lord, we just pray um, that you would move in and through the words of our scripture and sharing with us how we can be generous today and into the weeks to come. Amen. Please be seated. I'm sure that all of us could think of a situation or situations where something has been sprung on you. It's almost as if it's come out of nowhere. Maybe a roster suddenly had you on a different shift than you were expecting or filling a different role than usual. Maybe a new piece of equipment or a new software system has been put in without you knowing ahead of time or without training or the advice to use it. Maybe a process has been changed further up the line from you with no or little consultation around it. But when something comes seemingly out of nowhere, we struggle to process it. We find it much, much easier when we know what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and why it's going to happen that way. Where things are explained, laid out for us, we know what to expect. We began our lifestyle of generosity journey at the start of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, seeing that urging people to give more is not what it's all about, that it's about what God is doing in the life of the church and congregation, God's grace at work in us. Then last week, we explored the rest of chapter 8, seeing that it's not just those bits we consider spiritual, but all of our lives, given our whole lives and being to God. That is giving God's way. Paul is again dealing with the collection for Jerusalem. In our passage today, we see that he cares deeply about each stage of his planning. He's thought hard about the people involved and how they will be affected. He is determined to get it right, to explain each step of the process, to spell it out so that everyone knows what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and why it's going to happen that way, so that nothing is sprung on them and there are no surprises. So Paul begins explaining what is going to happen. And in some ways, he recognizes that his writing to them is superfluous because the Corinthians are already going to give. The Corinthians have taken initiative here. This idea is not new to them, it's something that they have already begun. At the start of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we read of Paul stirring the Corinthians through giving the example of the Macedonians' generosity. Now we see that Paul has been doing exactly the same about the Corinthians to the Macedonians. Like he has been boasting to the Corinthians about the Macedonians, he has been boasting to the Macedonians about the Corinthians. For I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. The Corinthians, like the Macedonians we read about a couple of weeks ago, are a group of believers who know what it is to be generous. They have said they are going to give. They've been ready to give since last year. So Paul is only reminding them of something they are planning to do. What is going to happen? The Corinthians are going to have their whole contribution collected up and ready. Paul then explains how the collection is going to happen. He isn't going to come himself, well, not just yet anyway. There is no way Paul wants to risk a why haven't you done this yet visit. Instead, he is sending Titus and another two unnamed representatives. Paul recognises that beginning the collection is not the same as having it ready. That the Corinthians may yet fail to be ready, despite their best intentions initially. Paul wants to be sure the collection is voluntary, not just done because he's coming. He wants to avoid any sense of it having been extorted from them, any sense that he was standing over them, forcing them to give. No, he'll send these brothers in the faith instead. Paul needs the assurance that the collection is going to be ready before he arrives. How is it going to happen? Paul is going to send these brothers who he has already commended to the Corinthians. Paul explains why it is going to happen that way. Accountability. 
Paul doesn't want the Corinthians to be caught out. The Corinthians have already planned to do the collection. The Macedonians know this. And Paul has expressed his confidence that the Corinthians will follow through. For them to not follow through now would cause embarrassment and humiliation both to Paul and to the Corinthians. It would suggest that, well, maybe they never planned to follow through in the first place, that they were all talk and no action, that they couldn't keep their promises. And so Paul is sending these brothers to visit them and finish the arrangements of their generous gift to assist them in completing what they have already started, so that when he arrives, it's ready. The Corinthians have a choice. They could refuse to cooperate and make the decision not to complete the offering. They could wait until Paul arrives before they cooperate and then hastily put something together. Or they could be accountable to what they've said they're going to do, freely and gladly, having the collection ready as planned, giving from a generous heart. When it comes to the Corinthians' generosity, Paul knows that the planning process is important. They need to know what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and why it's going to happen. When it comes to our own generosity, perhaps it's helpful for us to consider those things too. What? You will have received, and if not, there's some on the table in the foyer as you leave, a My Response envelope with a God-given goal card inside. This is for you to prepare to give generously. It might be of your finances, time, or something else. Before next week, we encourage you to spend time prayerfully considering how God is stirring you to be generous. It might be writing something you are already doing, and God is asking you to continue to commit that to him. It might be an extended or a new way God is challenging you to be generous. How? Once we've discovered the way God is stirring us to be generous, write it down on the card. Yes, there is a space for a financial goal, but there is also a space to write other ways of being generous. Next week, there will be an opportunity following the sermon to bring forward our cards as an indication of us committing our goals to God. Why not keep them to ourselves? Accountability that we will bring our collection, whatever that might be, to completion. All these goals will be collated by THQ and then shared with Jacob and I. This is not so that we can stand over you and make sure you are giving a certain dollar amount each week or are signed up for a certain number of volunteer hours or anything like that. But sometimes this step can help us in accountability. Becoming a soldier or an adherent involves a declaration in front of others. Now, I'm certainly not saying that we have to share with the entire core what we are setting as our goal. But sometimes that public action of stepping out of our seat and coming forward encourages us to be accountable to what we have promised God. As Jacob said last week, we all have something in our hands. Maybe that something feels small right now. Paul, at times of his ministry, could, at a glance, have been seen to have very little in his hands. Yet he still committed to writing letters to challenge and encourage others. How we journey with God in the moments we feel we have little to give still reveals God to others and shows them how they too can continue the journey with God in the moments they feel they have little to give. We can be generous with whatever we have in our hands, be that big or small. Let's pause this morning to consider what is going to happen, how it's going to happen, and why it's going to happen. Our generosity freely and gladly out of what we have. God is our source, giving God's way from a generous heart. As we do that, we're going to sing just as I am. We can come just as we are with whatever we have, surrendering that to God, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come 
with what I have and what I am. With many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings within and fears without, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, poor, wretched, blind, sight, riches, healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee to find, O Lamb of God, I come. Let's sing from verse 5. God, we thank you for all you have given to us. Everything we have is from you, the source of our provision. Today, we thank you for what we have in our hands. Even in the times we feel we have little left to give, you can still use that to reveal God to others. Help us to come before you just as we are and commit to giving your way. May you reveal to us the area or areas in which you are asking us to give, and then we do so from a generous heart. Amen. We leave here this morning assured that God will fulfill his promises to us, and living faithfully in service to him by giving of what we have with a generous heart, standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. So let's stand and declare these words together.
lives and the works of faith. Make a name for yourselves for generosity and compassion. Fulfill God's holy law by putting love into action as eagerly for others as you would for yourselves. And may God be your defender and provider. May Christ Jesus dispel all that disturbs or disables you. And may the Holy Spirit make you rich in faith and loving and merciful in action. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.